Friends and family, I am going to build a turtle, outdoor turtle enclosure today as I mentioned to you yesterday. I'm doing it, it's happening. I need to double check and see, I don't need to double check and see anything. I got all the materials in the back of my truck right now. I'm going to put my camera on automatic mode today so I don't have to think about the exposure because that would just be too much to think about. There's all the supplies right back there and amongst other random things that I just have in the back of my truck. We're gonna build it. I'm going to put it right back here on the hillside somewhere in a spot where it's going to get some sun and also be filtered sun through the, the oak trees and that's what Terry recommended so that's what I'm going to do. Build a 2x4 with a screen top lid. First thing I got to do is paint all the lumber first because this is a little trick I learned from my uncle that many of you may know. If you paint the wood first then you'll protect it from all kinds of microbes getting in there and destroying the wood and it'll last a hundred times longer than if you didn't paint the wood. So first thing I'm going to do, paint the wood with some nice outdoor paint. Let it dry, make my cuts, screw it together. And while it's drying, I got a ton of work to do because we are going to my parents' house tonight. And I gotta get all this stuff done before then. I've already done lots of video editing today. It's already, actually already about 2 p.m. So got my work cut out for me in a short amount of time. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> It took two coats, it's supposed to be a one coat and done thing, but uh, two coats just in case. That was some really dry plywood, really dry wood, so it soaked that paint right up. It's a perfect day actually for painting because it's like warm in the shade, but dry and it's perfect. So the stuff's drying pretty quickly. I'm gonna get my full design plan out. Simple two by four box with a lid, a hinged lid, but, and I want the outside dimensions to be exactly two by four. So I've got, of course, uh, I'll tell you exactly what materials I got. I got six eight foot pieces of two by two, and then one sheet of plywood, one four by eight, four foot by eight, one four, by, oh my gosh. One four foot by eight foot piece of plywood. Uh, some screws, a little bit of mesh, a two by five piece of mesh that I'm gonna cut down to two by four, some staples, and uh, that's about it. So as I mentioned before, with the framing of the box, I'm not gonna go over the full details of how to do that. It's just it's boring to me to explain, so I don't want to. I'm gonna get my design written out real quick, and then by the time I'm done writing it down, this should be ready to cut. Get some 48 inch pieces, so I need, and then two and three quarters. I want that to be 24 inches, so 24 inches minus two and three quarters is 21 and a quarter. Two, 21 and a quarter, that'll be for the lid. 48 minus two and three quarters, 45 and one quarter. TT! <laughs> 4 times 24, and we already got the 8 at that, so 424, alright. I think we got it! So I got all my sticks cut, and then before I frame them, I'm gonna paint the end so that every end is covered in paint. That's important to me. my favorite part which is framing up the box. I got screws. Framing with nails is a lot of fun but when you're using just two by twos and not two by fours then uh, I like screws and then especially if you want to take it apart later screws makes that easier too and they're deck screws so and they got the little star head instead of Phillips makes it nice and easy. Right Noah? Come here bud. What do you know? Rose quartz? Yeah. What about rose quartz? That it's pink and it's like quartz and it's minerals. And I used to have one, then Eli broke it. They're pokey. And they're called rose quartz because they're rose pink. And that's all I know. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's funny, I'm using this white balance setting for direct shade, which is what I'm in, is direct shade, but it's giving this like 
weird orange glow to everything and I'm not going to change it now since I've been filming with it for so long. I'm just going to go with it and everything's going to be a little bit weird and orange. It's funny I was talking with Garrett the other day about how I haven't been building anything recently and doing a lot of filming. The tool that I needed to tighten down this thing so I can pre-drill the holes in this framing so I don't split the wood, this was in my camera bag because I use, the, I use it for camera stuff way more often than I use it for anything else. And so it just wasn't there. I, I couldn't find it for a while. Then I've got it and I found it and uh, now we're ready to go. Yeah, camera stuff. <sighs> Still splitting the ends. I think it just means I need a bigger pre-drill bit. <laughs> Yep, just a little bigger pre-drill is all we needed. No more cracking. So here's a little pro tip. I don't cut the plywood until after I finish framing and then I take a measurement of the exact frame I built. No matter how you plan things out, sometimes things might not come out exactly the way you expected them to. So you don't want to have it too much cut and then realize, oops, because you can never put it back on. You can cut more off, but you can't put more back on. So see my point exactly here. I'm measuring for the, the width and it's like an eighth of an inch longer than 48 inches. So, eh, I'm just gonna let that slide. I'm just gonna cut 48 because the plywood's eight feet. So if I cut it in half exactly, it'll be 48 on both sides, which is what I plan for because I've only got one sheet of plywood. So, four, 48 it is. <laughs> some little hinges on the back top lid I'm getting tired but uh, it's going look ah now I just got to put a screen on top and uh, we'll be freaking golden biscuits go dig a hole put it in it and That's about where it's gonna live. Uh, I'm gonna dig a little perimeter around it so it's partially underground and, and that's, about, uh, that's about where it's gonna be. And it, I scoped this spot out this morning so it's like this spot is in pretty much half in the sun, half in the shade all day and then filtered light through the trees. So which is what Terry recommended. So yeah, I think we're good. I'm not, I don't know that I'm gonna put her in there right now. I wanna get like a little more of a pond thing situated there and I've, I've still got a lot of work to do. I still gotta clean all the snakes and whatnot before we head out tonight. So. At least it's built. Uh, dig a hole right now and see what, uh, see how far we get. That's what I'm talking about, Beatrice. All right, half in the sun, half in the shade. Whew. It's time to go clean some snakes.
totally forgot that I had all this mess to clean up out here, man. Whew. Ugh, man. I'm gonna feed a couple indigo snakes and then you guys can, uh, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy the feeding of the indigo snakes. Cause after that, I think I'm out of here, man. That was phenomenal, man. What a cool species. We still got the male. We're not done yet. How nice is that footage? You like that footage? I feel like I, I'm done for the day. I don't think I can top that anymore. Uh, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Freedom Breeder for making it possible for me to have time to build cages like that today because without those guys, man, the work I do with those guys, I wouldn't have the time to do that type of stuff. So if you guys are looking for some awesome ball python morphs, those guys got you covered for sure. Um, I don't know if I was pointing at the right spot. <laughs> Aloha, you guys have a great day.